I started sculpting around two years ago and I can still remember just how frustrating it used to be. Um, like nothing was looking the way it was supposed to look and I didn't even really know what I was doing wrong. So I figured it might be a great time to actually share some of the tips and core principles that have helped me greatly. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them down below and I'll try to answer them. Uh, once again, this isn't going to be software specific. Um, while I'm working in ZBrush, those principles apply just the same in Blender, uh, Mudbox, or even 3D code. So that being said, let's get right into it and start off with what I think is the most important aspect of sculpting digitally. Now, the one thing that has actually helped me to elevate my sculpting skills fairly quickly, and the one thing that I wasn't even thinking about in the beginning, but it turned out to be the most eye-opening thing ever, um, and that was actually camera movement. Now, this might be obvious to some, uh, however, it wasn't to me. So, and also this might be the only thing that is actually easier to apply in real life than it is to do digitally because when we're working in real life with actual clay or when we're constructing something out of stone we automatically by moving our own head um, take a look at our construction from different angles and perspectives and perhaps we're holding something in our hand and we rotate our hand trying to look at it from all different sides but when we're working in 3D space we tend to remain in static positions fairly quickly, especially when starting out, and this is what I did. So let's say I was trying to construct a face, and I was, I would like start off from front view, trying to shape the jaw and shape the side of the head, trying to perhaps even find proper, proper position of the eye socket and so on. Um, and like by the time I would move my camera around, I would realize that nothing was really looking the way it was supposed to look. Given the fact that we are working on a three-dimensional volume in 3D space, um, so this is something you have to keep in mind because what we should be doing is moving and rotating our camera and our viewport as much as humanly possible to actually get an understanding of the volume we are constructing. So try to move your camera at all times, especially when starting out because this is really going to help you to understand volumes and shapes and proportions. Um, you can still move your mesh using the move brush and you can still try to work like angle specific, especially in later stages when you're trying to refine an area. However, especially when blocking out or when learning how to construct volumes and shapes, you should try to move your camera at all times. Um, moving your mesh from as many angles as somehow possible and then you will realize after some time that it actually gets a lot easier um, at least it was for me so obviously there's still shapes that just take some time to construct like the human face however all of this is going to get way easier once you're actually trying to or once you're actually moving your camera And then nextly, and let's perhaps start off um, with a clean sphere. Um, I would like to emphasize two, two principles that go very well with one another. So the first one would be work like big areas to small areas or work low contrast or low detailed areas to high detailed areas. And secondly, work from low resolution to high resolution. So basically what we're talking about is constructing larger areas first and focusing on primary shapes and volumes. And then while increasing our resolution, we also increase, we also increase our level of detail. So perhaps to start off, let's start off with probably like 70 or 80 would be great. Um, and let's say we were constructing a male torso. So in the first few stages, we can just focus on proportions, on shapes and sizes, um, where everything is supposed to be, uh, trying to find out about neck placement and traps, um, once again making sure we're looking from all different sides, 
trying to work out our physique um, taking care of the rib cage uh, and pecs everything that goes along with it remesh every now and then because we obviously need resolution um, and then we can really take our time at this stage because what we're trying to construct is the fundamental shape of everything that's going on top of it so we should try to focus on getting clean model first before we actually start off um, with adding detail so just constructing basic anatomy um, constructing the overall volumes of the male upper body for example or even the face so there's great reference online i might link some down in the description below um, and then let's say we were satisfied with how all of this looks even though we are not um, we could then go ahead and increase our resolution at some time in order to create fine lines and, and details and so on. So try to work large volumes to smaller volumes and most importantly try to work low detail to high detail while increasing your resolution. Okay and then nextly, and I think it is great that we're doing some sort of live demonstration of it, would be to work with a really small selection of brushes. So I think so far the only two brushes I've used um, were damn standard or, or a move and clay build up and perhaps some sort of damn standard along the side. And I think one can construct any shape only using those three brushes. So especially in ZBrush, um, if we open the brush menu, um, it can be very overwhelming and it is even to me, I'm just realizing, um, even though I've been spending a lot of time in ZBrush. Um, and I think it is needless to say that all of those heavy use case and even custom IMM brushes and alphas and everything that goes along with it has a use case. However, when starting out and especially when constructing shapes, um, move and clay buildup should be sufficient in order to create almost anything. Um, so try to work with those um, and once you are used to working with them um, try to add something that adds a benefit to your work every now and then. And then nextly, and I think this actually is a fairly quick one, um, don't overstress on topology. So there's a proper time and place to talk about retopology and edge flow and baking and every technical aspect that goes along with animation and character art. However, I think the only thing everyone should be focusing on when they start out with sculpting is constructing volumes and shapes in 3D space. So there's a lot of information uh, regarding topology out there. There also is a lot of misinformation, or at least there was to me when I started out because I wasn't understanding any of it. Um, so. Topology, I think, is a segment on its own, and Dynamesh or re Remeshing and Blender are two very great ways to get good looking results while also understanding the fundamentals of sculpting. So, that being said, try to work with Dynamesh, try to focus on volumes and shapes, and leave everything regarding topology or edge flow um, or animation for later day. And then another great tip would be to adjust your stroke work or the direction of your strokes to the shapes you're creating. So this is especially great um, with the muscles, for example, with constructing the pecs or even constructing shoulders um, or the muscles of the neck and so on. Um, obviously, one doesn't have to do it, so you can construct all the shapes um, using various techniques. Um, however, from my experience, it just might be very helpful um, in order to understand the shapes or the anatomy you're creating. So that being said, every now and then it might be great to just adjust the stroke work um, or the direction of your strokes to the shapes you're creating. And then lastly, let's perhaps take a look at contrast. So 
whether it's in color or shape or proportions or even like area of detail, um, I think there are very few cases where having some sort of detail in those areas doesn't add anything of benefit to your work, if that makes sense. So if we take a look at, for example, the hair, we do have softened areas and in contrast to those we have planar changes and strong fall-offs um, and obviously this is highly stylized however this goes or those principles do apply to realistic art styles as well um, and then for example looking at the facial features we do have soft areas contrasting to sharp body landmarks um, and lastly I think and this is what I've got wrong for a long time and I still see a lot um, would be to mistake clothing or folds um, for soft soft edges. Um, so while it is true that clothing consists of very soft material, um, the folds that are created actually have very sharp planar edges. Um, and I think this is something that can be very misleading, especially when starting out. So that being said, I hope those tips um, might be helpful to some of you. At least I think those are the most important ones that would have helped me in the beginning. Um, I get that sculpting can be very frustrating. Um, however, I would encourage anyone to push through, given that it is very rewarding once you push past the point of, of frustration. Um, so once again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them down below. I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. And then I hope you guys have a great day and enjoy your time creating some sculptures.